Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minute. Here we go, let's get started with some Pixel Force. Now, I only use one model for my Pixel Force. You may call these stakes, long poles, long picks, whatever you may call them. I call them Pixel Force because, well, it's a forest of pixels, and that's what I'm sticking to. All right. Here's how I have mine set up, and I'm going to show you with uh, some music in a sequence uh, some very simple practice techniques you can use with your stakes or forests. Here we go. Uh, first of all, I'm using the cube model. That is this guy right. Let me find it. You got. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. Create new cube. So this is what I used right here to create both of these for my roof. I didn't have room in my yard for these because it just I don't think they would have been seen very well. But I had lots of flat space on my roof that wouldn't interfere with anything else in my show, and so that's what I did. So here we go. I have one of the uh, cubes for my Pixel Force selected. We can see here it starts from the bottom left front. Front, bottom, left. Okay, that's fair enough. That means this starts right here on this first one. And it's the same over here. It starts on this first one. I kept these identical. Um, it says vertical left to right and alternate pixel. What is that going to do? That is going to uh, go from left to right, and the pixel is going to go up and then down and then over, up and down. And so I got these, um, I ordered these pixels from Gilbert Engineering. So they went up uh, 13, or they went 13. So they would go skip, 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 and come back down. And then there was about a foot of space between them. And then they would do the same thing to the end, I think totaling 156 pixels. So that was the height. The height, it would be the number of pixels on each one of these forced stakes. There we go. Uh, the width was 12. It goes 12 across. And then the depth was uh, 13. Actually, let me say that again. Yes, 6. The depth was 6. That's how far it goes back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's it. Now, when I was first messing with this, because, you know, as you know, in this hobby, there are a lot of instructions for many, many, many things. And the one thing uh, that was preventing this from working was one tick box. One little thing I found out, and that is this guy right here. Layers all start in the same place. If you do that and you're going to wire yours similarly, that is the key. Okay, so that's it. So you have plenty of time to pause this and study this. Uh, if you wanted to start from the right side or the back, you certainly could, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna show you how to test to make sure that the wiring is correct when you're testing your sequences. Let's go over to our sequencer. So I'm gonna play this for you, just a little bit of music, and then we'll talk about each of these effects. <laughs> Cool. Simple, simple, simple exercises for you. One of my favorite tools is the wave tool. I've done other videos on this, but the wave tool is really, really cool with uh, the cube model. There's a lot of things you can do depending on the render style you choose. And you just have to go through here and try each and every one of these out to see what really looks cool. Uh, changing the look of this can be very, very easy using the effect 
right now. If I were to change it over here on the bottom to mirror, I'm gonna get a whole bunch more. I could change the number of waves and it becomes a completely different look. Completely different. But you can get just about everything you need done at the group level with this. Uh, if we look at this next one, this is something that uh, is very, very, very simple to do, and that's simply using the single strand effect and putting it on rotate 90 degrees. If I put that on no none, which is just normal, then it just kind of goes back and forth, and that's cool and everything. Let me put a nice little 3D fade on there, and that looks cool. Or we can put this on up and back, up and down. Very cool. Simple, simple stuff to do. Now, this is all at the group level. There are times where you will want to venture into the model specific level, not the group, but the model, because there are a lot of different options in here at the model level. You can see this is stacked X horizontally. We could go to overlaid X. That looks about the same. We can go to Y. Looks about the same. We go to Z. Looks about the same. Maybe I should be rendering. There we go. That's yeah, probably going to be about the same. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's make sure we're looking at the right one. In this case, the left one. So let's keep going down our list. Let's go left side, just the left side. I want to go back up here to the stacked X horizontally, and that's where that's at. Uh, depending on the effect and depending on the render style, there are some pretty unique things you can do. Most of my work remains at the group level. It just keeps it simple, and I haven't found anything I can't do at the group level other than what I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, this is using per model per preview. This is a pinwheel with some value curves that create some really interesting movement. And I wasn't sure how this was going to look live. I just love the way this looks live. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, be sure and smash that thumbs up. It really helps the channel, and if you like, Subscribe to the channel so you get those notifications when new content comes out. Here's one of the things that you can't do at the group level unless you were to create submodels specific. But why create the work of creating submodels when they already exist at the model level in the render style? And that is the ability to put the effect only on the top side. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know that I use it a ton because if I've got a pixel forest, I sort of want to turn a lot of the pixels on, not just the top. But it is neat that it exists. It is there. You could do this just on the front side, the right side, left side. You can see right here. It is really, really kind of cool. And I think somewhat unique. Uh, or put it on the bottom side. And there you go. That's just the bottom and nothing's happening on the top ones. And then if you wanted to, uh, you could do something else with these others. So mix match and go nuts. All right, that's been Monday Minute. See ya.